Hello, my name is Clarence Hillard, and in today's video, we're going to go over how to import and create your own templates utilizing the CX mobile app. Oh, I'm going to hit escape, and we are going to hop into a configuration uh, template that I have already generated, and we're going to use some of the variables within here as examples of what you should be looking out for or what you can do and leverage uh, when creating your own template. So right at the top here, we have a, oops, we have a host name. So this is the actual CLI uh, syntax. So whenever you're creating a host name on the switch, you're gonna do host name, and then you're gonna take the uh, parameter, and that's gonna be the host name of whatever you want the switch to be. So here I've made that a variable that will pop up as an input field in the CX mobile app. So the name of the input field will actually be host name, capital H, capital N, and then, the, and then the percent sign just delineates that this is a variable. And then whenever I use the CX mobile app, I can just put any string value in there and it'll apply that to the switch. So that's pretty handy. Down here, I have a, some ifs. I think I'm gonna actually explain some of the variable types before I get into these if statements because they can be a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna go down here and you can see I have interface, uplink, um, uplink interface and that's my variable name and that's going to be on the CX mobile app so that's going to be my input value but the only type of information you can put in there has to be in the format of the interface so it has to be in the format of interface 2 slash 1 slash 1 or 1 slash 1 slash 1 or 1 slash 1 slash five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, etc., cetera, and so on. Uh, that's what this actually uh, does, is it says it only will take information that fits that particular format. And that's one of the types of uh, variables that you can set. And there's actually four different variable types. So you have interface, IP, password, user, and VLAN. Most of the time I use either interface or IP. Uh, the password is specifically for if you want to set a password within here, and that's uh, useful for if you want to have your template automatically add advice into NetEdit, and I'll show you what that particular variable will look like. And then IP is, there's an example of that down here, where I have management IP, and then I have the actual format as IP, which means it'll only accept IPv4 uh, format. So those are some of the types of formats that I have, and if I had VLAN, I would just accept the VLAN ID, uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can do that within the templates. Now, back up to my if statements. Now, whenever you have an if statement, what this will do uh, is it'll actually have a, a radio button within the app. And this is a great use case for if you have uh, different kinds of stacks. So you have a 24 port or a 48 port. In my example, I just incremented the first number just for simplicity's sake, but I would go one switch member one, he has 24 ports and I would put all 24 ports and then the configuration under those interfaces as well. And then when you're actually using the app, you can just click on that button and it'll configure all 24 ports. And if it's a stack of two or three switches, member two is 24, you click that, Maybe it's a 48 switch, 48 port switch. You then have that within your template and you just check that box as you're configuring and have that all get applied to your switch. But one key thing to note here is you have to have a end if with a zero, which looks like I actually didn't actually put in here. So I'm gonna do that right now on the fly. So there we go. And we're going to put zero because you have to give that mobile app uh, or the user of the mobile app the option to say no. And what this does, so what I just did was I said if the same variable equals zero, don't do anything. I just didn't put anything in between those lines. If I wanted to put something, I could. I could enter some information here, but I don't want to. Uh, and this is a requirement, so you have to have this in your configuration. Otherwise, the template won't import. So I'm going to do that just really quickly on those three. And 
zero. Oops. And there you go. And the zero just means if it's no, if it's no, don't do anything. The one is yes. So if you select yes, it'll apply this configuration. So pretty simple uh, when it comes to templating. Uh, and in our next video, we're actually going to show you a template. So we're actually going to edit this template to make it look exactly like we want. So we don't really care about any of the, the stacking. We'll be doing stacking within our uh, mobile app. But for this particular setup, we just want basic connectivity to our uplink and we'll, we'll figure out the interfaces later. Uh, we don't want to confuse our helper that we have later. So this is going to be my template. If I wanted to tweak this template to automatically add to NetEdit, what I would do is I would actually add the lines admin password and password up here. So instead of ciphertext, I would do, oops, delete plain text. And I would add this variable. So I just copied and pasted that from a notepad. Uh, and this is going to then prompt the user to enter in an admin uh, password in order to add it to NetEdit. The second thing you would need that's also a requirement to add a device is a variable of management IP dash IP. So I'm going to enter it in just below this line here, just so you can see what it looks like. And here you can see management IP underscore IP and then IP is the format. And the difference between this management IP and the one below it is the capitalization. So it has to be exactly lowercase like this. Otherwise, if you enter this in and you have your admin password both in your template and it's not accepting it, it means either you didn't accept, you didn't type it exactly like this all lowercase or you didn't type this exactly all lowercase as well. So if you typed it all uppercase, it wouldn't automatically add your device uh, into NetEdit. But both of these things have to be in your configuration. So I would replace this management IP, backspace that out. And now whenever I actually use this template, it's also going to go through the process of adding the device into NetEdit. Now, one of the key things to remember about NetEdit is you have to have connectivity to NetEdit via whatever device is actually adding the device to NetEdit. So if it's an iPad, a cell phone, etc., cetera, uh, it has to have connectivity to NetEdit to make the call to NetEdit to add this device in. Otherwise, if the phone doesn't have connectivity to NetEdit, it's never going to get the call to say, hey, you need to add this device in. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter if the switch has connectivity to NetEdit uh, because NetEdit will actually get the call and then it'll say, I tried to add this device, but it went unreachable. And then when you actually go in and plug the switch in later on, NetEdit will get use the IP address and it'll try again and it'll learn that device and say, oh, it's reachable now. And it'll appear in NetEdit as well. So that's just a nice little uh, tip uh, for you. If you are just staging a bunch of devices and in a place you're staging, you have access to NetEdit, but the switches don't. It would be really, really convenient uh, to just plug them in later on and then it'll appear and add into NetEdit. So, like I said, we simplified this configuration a little bit, and in the next video, we are going to actually show you uh, what this template looks like, and we're going to have one of our guys on my team uh, actually also stack some switches and then push this configuration and uh, get them all ready to go. So, thank you for learning about templates and variables with me.